Catholic History Trek, a podcast exploring the Catholic past. Okay, stop me if you've heard this one before. A Dominican, a king, and a nobleman walk into a bar. Well, actually, they didn't walk into a bar, but they each had a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and together they started a religious order. That vision is known as Our Lady of Ransom, and the religious order is the Order of Our Lady of Mercy. In this episode, I'll be trekking solo without my renowned co-host Kevin Schmiesing and explore the history of these men, this apparition, and the religious order they founded. By the early 8th century, the Moors had invaded and conquered much of the Iberian Peninsula in what is present-day Portugal and Spain. Their advance had been essentially halted at the Pyrenees with Catholic armies and resistance driving them out of France and staving off their control of the northernmost bit of Spain. After being subjected to Moorish conquest and oppression for more than three centuries, the armies of Catholic Spain began to retake their homeland by the end of the 11th century, winning battles against the Umayyad Caliphate in what would be called the Reconquista. By the end of the 12th century, the Spanish had retaken the northern half of Spain, including the kingdoms of Leon, Aragon, and Castile, while the Moors still controlled the southern half of Spain in what they called Al-Andalus. Unfortunately, not only was Spain besought by Moorish invaders at this time, but also by heretics, namely the Albigensian heretics, also called the Cathari. They were a heretical branch of Christianity based out of southern France, whose heresy could be insufficiently summarized as spirit good, body bad. They will be covered in more detail in a future Catholic History Trek episode. Pope Innocent III had called for a crusade against the heresy, which led to fighting between the Catholics and the Albigensians. Peter II, King of Aragon, had attempted to arrange a marriage between his toddler son James I and the daughter of Simon de Montfort, who led the forces of the Catholic crusade against the Albigensians. But ultimately, Peter II took up arms with the Albigensians and was subsequently killed in the Battle of Moret in 1213. After the death of King Peter II, Pope Innocent III intervened on behalf of James, preventing Simon de Montfort from using the toddler for political gain, but instead, the Pope entrusted James to the care of the Knights Templar at Mozan in Aragon. When James reached the age of majority and replaced his great-uncle Count Sancho in ruling Aragon, he eventually earned the name James the Conqueror due to his fearless nature and spending much of his reign, which spanned over 60 years, fighting against the Moors in the Crusades and Reconquista of the Iberian Peninsula. More importantly, for the purposes of this podcast, on August the 1st of 1218, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to the young king in an apparition. At the same time, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared in a separate apparition to nobleman St. Peter Nolasco. Nineteen years older than King James I, Nolasco had been part of the crusade against the Albigensians. He had been aligned with Simon de Montfort's forces who defeated the Albigensian heretics in the battle where King James' father, Peter II, had been killed. At the time of the birth of Peter Nolasco, near the end of the 12th century, Muslim rulers controlled out Andalus in the southern half of Spain, all of the northern coast of Africa, and essentially all of the Middle East, despite the Third Crusade presently underway, attempting to retake what had been recently lost to Saladin. With their power spanning the Mediterranean Sea, the Muslims operated a large slave trade throughout the Mediterranean. Christians along the coast of the sea and in Spain were often subject to slave raids, in which they would be captured, imprisoned, and sold into slavery. These enslaved Europeans were often forced to renounce their Catholic faith at the threat of torture and death. Estimates of the Muslim slave trade during this time rival and surpass the total numbers of African slaves brought to the United States of America. For reference, it's estimated that about 388,000 African slaves were brought to the United States during the entirety of the African slave trade. By comparison, a very conservative estimate of the number of Christians seized in combined Muslim slave raids in the Mediterranean Sea and Black Sea during the centuries of Muslim-run slavery would be 3 to 5 million, with actual numbers likely around 5 to 10 million. 
as a historical aside, even after the menace of the Moors had waned in the Iberian Peninsula, the Muslim slave trade lasted into the 19th century, for many years fueled by the Ottoman Turks, and lastly by the infamous Barbary pirates from the northern coast of Africa, to whom Western nations such as the United States even paid tributes to. Eventually, the Americans' victory over the Barbary pirates in the Second Barbary War of 1815, the British bombardment of Algiers, and the French conquest of Algiers and Tunis brought a crippling blow to the Muslim-run slave trade, bringing it to a mere trickle of what it had once been. Back to the 12th century, Peter Nolasco was a pious layman who had worked diligently to rescue Christian slaves from their Muslim captors. He was a wealthy nobleman, but unable to pay for the release of all the captives, so in 1213 he formed an organization that worked to ransom those too poor to otherwise be freed. Fifteen years later, the Blessed Mother appeared to him in a vision, informing him that it would be pleasing if he were to form a religious order for the purpose of freeing the Christians from their Muslim slave masters. The following day, Peter Nolasco hastened to inform his confessor, St. Raymond of Penafort, about the vision, only to discover that St. Raymond of Penafort also received the miraculous apparition of Our Lady, appearing to him with the same counsel of establishing a religious order to free captive Christians. Raymond had been a famous professor of canon law at the University of Bologna, who gave up his worldly honors to enter the Order of Preachers, or Dominicans, recently established by St. Dominic when he had this vision. The apparition which all three men, the Dominican, the king, and the nobleman, saw is known as Our Lady of Ransom, and soon the three men converged and set about to establish the religious order, as instructed in the vision, for the purpose of redeeming captive Christians from their Muslim enslavers. The Order of Our Lady of Mercy, better known today as the Mercedarians, was established in 1218 and approved by Pope Gregory IX in 1230. Gregory IX gave them the rule of St. Augustine to guide them, and white habits as a reminder of the purity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose patronage they were under. In addition to the white habits, the Mercedarians also wear the coat of arms of King James I, consisting of the Maltese cross of the Crusading Knights of St. John, above a shield of red and gold vertical stripes. In addition to the traditional three vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, the Mercedarians also took a fourth vow, which was to offer themselves, if necessary, to remain in captivity until ransom could be procured for the liberation of Christian slaves. St. Peter Nolasco served as the first superior or commander general of the order. Estimates vary for how many Christian slaves were ransomed from the Muslims by the Mercedarians. One source mentions that in the first 400 years of their existence, just short of 500,000 Christians were ransomed to freedom. The scourge of Muslim piracy and slave trading was so rampant that the Mercedarians were not the only religious order established for the purpose of ransoming Christians captured by Muslim pirates. Founded in 1198, the Order of the Most Holy Trinity and of the Captives, known as the Trinitarians, were also active in this work of freeing Christian slaves. From their founding in 1198 to 1787, so 600 years later, the Trinitarians were said to have ransomed some 900,000 Christians to freedom during that time. Even St. Vincent de Paul had been captured as a slave by Muslim slave traders from the coast of North Africa before escaping a few years later. It said in the last 20 years of his life, his religious order ransomed 1,200 Christian slaves to freedom. Upon their founding, the Mercedarians consisted of both clerics and lay knights, with the knights forming a large chunk of the order's members. But a century after their founding, Pope John XXII approved a military order in Aragon, Our Lady of Montessa, which many of the Mercedarian lay knights joined, shifting the composition of the Mercedarians to ordain clergy. Although a woman's third order remained part of the Mercedarians, as did a reform group started in the early 1600s, known as the Recollected or Discalced Mercedarians. Not only did the Mercedarians admirably and successfully labor to free the bodies of Christians from the physical slavery of the Mohammedans, they also labored to free the souls of Christians 
from the spiritual slavery of the devil too. And today, the focus of the Mercedarians is on the spiritual slavery, be it sin, social, political, psychological, or drug-related. Mercedarians can be found serving in jails, impoverished neighborhoods, hospitals, and engaged in educational activities. Today, they're located in 17 countries and in the United States have locations in Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Not including their sainted founders, St. Peter Nolasco, or the Dominican, St. Raymond de Penafort, the order has produced nine saints and blesseds. Of these, perhaps the best known is St. Raymond Nonatus. Raymond was called Nonatus, which is Latin for not born, as he was delivered by Caesarean section when his mother died in childbirth. Raymond succeeded Peter Nolasco as the chief ransomer and set about to fulfill the goals of the order. In Valencia, he ransomed 140 Christians from slavery, and then he set out for North Africa, where he ransomed another 250 captives in Algiers. In Tunis, when his money ran out, in keeping with the fourth vow of the order, he surrendered himself as a hostage in exchange for 28 Christians. When it was learned that he had converted several Mohammedans through his preaching, his captors bore a hole through his lips with a hot iron and padlocked his mouth shut to prevent him from preaching, which can be seen in the Vicente Carducho painting Martirio de San Ramon Nonato, found in the Prado Museum in Madrid, Spain. After eight months of captivity, St. Raymond was ransomed by his order and he was returned to his native Spain. He was appointed a cardinal by the Pope upon his return, but died the next year. In 1657, he was canonized, and today, Raymond Nonatus is the patron saint of expectant mothers and midwives. The Feast of Our Lady of Ransom is September 24th, which is also the date this episode is being recorded. When the Muslims were sailing the seas, capturing millions of Christians to be sold into slavery, the Dominican, the nobleman, and the king would have been praying and assisting at the holy sacrifice of the Mass in the Church's historic language of Latin. And so, in this historic language, we pray for the release of all Christians, either unjustly enslaved by physical captors or enslaved by the spiritual bondage of sin. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicuturat in Principio et Nunc et Semper et in Saecula Saeculorum. Amen. Thank you for listening to Catholic History Trek. You can reach us at catholichistorytrek at gmail.com.